Michael Corvin is a descendant of the Corvinus clan. Born in the United States, his paternal grandparents hailed from Hungary. Pursuing a career in medicine, he became a surgeon. Michael's life took a dark turn when he was transformed into the first Lycan and vampire hybrid after being bitten by Lucian and Selen. He and Selen, who later becomes his lover, have a teenage daughter named Eve. Michael was born at some point in 1975. According to the novelizations of Underworld and Underworld Evolution, his paternal grandparents were originally from Hungary, immigrating to the United States in the 1940s. As a child, Michael spent summers in Hungary with his grandfather. Upon turning 18, Michael joined the United States Marine Corps but was discharged after a year. In his early 20s, he embarked on his medical studies. In the years preceding the events of Underworld, Michael was engaged to a woman named Samantha. Tragically, they were involved in a peculiar car accident that severely injured Samantha. Despite Michael's efforts, she passed away before help arrived. Distraught over her death, Michael chose to leave America and start anew. Recalling the summers he spent in Hungary with his grandfather, he chose Budapest as his new home and settled into a position as an internal trauma surgeon at St. Istvan Hospital. Before moving to Hungary, Michael resided in Long Island and had only been in Budapest for a few months prior to the events of Underworld. One night, on his way to work, Michael found himself caught in a crossfire between vampires and lichens. Unbeknownst to him, the lichens had targeted him for an experiment due to a rare genetic trait in his blood. They sought to retrieve a blood sample for analysis, but Michael managed to escape due to the interference of the death dealers. Upon returning home, Michael was attacked by a vampire named Selene curious as to why the lichens were pursuing him. Before she could act further, the lichens attacked. Michael fled to an elevator, narrowly escaping both Selene and the lichens. When the elevator opened, he was confronted by Lucian, a lichen with a particular interest in Michael's blood. Selene shot Lucian, but not before he could bite Michael, infecting him with the lycanthropy virus. After Selene dragged Michael away, it was revealed that Lucian had managed to sample Michael's blood during the bite. The lichen spat Michael's blood into a vial for further analysis. Selene and Michael rush to her car, but Lucian pursues them. Before Selene can run him over, Lucian stabs her, slicing an artery and causing her to bleed severely. Reluctant to admit she's critically injured, she faints at the wheel and drives the car into a river. Michael rescues her from the sinking car, then performs CPR until she starts breathing again and coughs up the water from her lungs. Subsequently, Michael uses part of his jacket to bind her wound and stop the bleeding. Shortly after, he faints beside her. Later, the lichens analyze the blood sample obtained by Lucian and ascertain that Michael carries a rare gene known as the Corvinus strain which was passed down to him by the third mortal son of Alexander Corvinus. Upon discovering this, the Lycans make capturing Michael their primary objective and later head to his workplace looking for information about him. Contrary to the rules of her coven, Selene hides Michael in the coven's mansion. Upon waking, Michael is confronted by Erica, another vampire from Selene's coven, who hisses at him and discovers that Michael has been infected by a Lycan. Michael escapes the mansion by jumping through a window and returns to the hospital where he was being treated for his wounds. While at the hospital, he shares the events that occurred with a co-worker who soon proves untrustworthy. The co-worker, concerned about Michael's mental state, informs two police officers of Michael's presence at the hospital. Upon seeing the two officers, Michael acts quickly and escapes from the hospital. Later, Michael appears at the mansion to find Selly. She leads him to one of the vampire's secret safe houses, where she explains the seriousness of his situation. Selene handcuffs Michael to a chair after kissing him and gives him a gun with silver bullets. She then leaves Michael in the safe house while returning to the coven. As hours go by, Michael attempts to break the handcuff's chain by shooting it, but fails. He falls asleep and dreams of another person's past memories. When Michael wakes up, he sees Selene running into the room. Lycans are chasing her and she wants to get Michael out of there. Selene shoots through the window and orders Michael to jump. Frightened, he hesitates at first, but the shooting becomes so intense that he falls through the window. In his fall, his body contorts, allowing him to land unscathed. Two police officers, who are actually Lycans, find Michael and kidnap him, intending to take him to Lucian. 
Upon glimpsing the full moon through the car window, Michael begins to transform into his lichen form. To stop this, Pierce and Taylor inject him with an enzyme. Michael is taken to the lichen lair, where he meets Lucian. Once there, he begins to see Lucian's memories, triggered by seeing Lucian's locket, and learns that it was an elder vampire named Victor who started the war between lichens and vampires by killing Sonia, Lucian's lover, who was Victor's own daughter. Shortly thereafter, the Death Dealers raid the hideout. Selen separates from the group and finds Michael. She frees him and they share a kiss. As Selen tries to escape with Michael, they encounter her jealous suitor, Craven. Enraged at seeing Selen with another man, Craven shoots Michael with silver nitrate bullets. Michael collapses, reeling from the effects of the silver bullets. Lucian tells Selen that biting Michael is the only way to save his life. She does so but is thrown aside by Victor. Upon seeing Michael, Victor hurls him through a wall, and he lands in a puddle of water. Starting to feel the effects of the combination of both viruses, Michael transforms into the first hybrid. Victor fights Michael, believing that a hybrid is an abomination that must not be allowed to live. Michael initially gains the upper hand due to his enhanced strength, but Victor, an ancient vampire with centuries of combat experience, eventually bests him. Towards the end of the fight, Victor begins to strangle Michael and almost kills him, but Selen intervenes to save Michael, using Victor's sword to kill him. After Victor's murder, Selen and Michael flee from both vampires and lichens alike. Michael learns to transform at will and soon begins to understand the power he has been given, but still refuses to succumb to the need to drink blood to sustain his immortality. Initially, they try to hide in one of the vampire safe houses, but Michael refuses to believe Selen when she tells him he must not eat human food, and goes to a nearby tavern. Michael's attempts to eat normal food go awry when his body rejects it, causing him to start vomiting. This, and a timely news bulletin about Michael's involvement in the subway shooting, catches the attention of two police officers, who draw their weapons on Michael. Overcome with anger and bloodlust, Michael partially transforms and attacks one of the officers. Realizing what he is doing, he flees the restaurant, being pursued by the officers. During the chase, he is shot several times, but Selen's timely intervention saves his life. After incapacitating the police officers, Selen asks Michael to drink her blood to help speed up the healing of his wounds. Immediately afterward, Selen and Michael confront the last remaining ancient vampire, Marcus Corvinus. Believing Selen has something he wants, Marcus attacks her. Michael shoots Marcus, giving them time to escape. The duo flees to the highway, where they hijack a truck. Michael fully transforms into his hybrid form and begins to fight Marcus. They appear evenly matched until Marcus nearly throws Michael from the truck, leaving him only hanging from chains. Selen gets rid of Marcus by crashing the truck into a cliffside. As the sun rises, Selen hides in the truck, which Michael drives to an abandoned warehouse. There, he covers the windows with black paint and tries to use a first aid kit to treat Selen's wounds, only to find they have fully healed. They spend the day there and consummate their mutual affection. The following night, Selen and Michael decide to meet with Andreas Tannies, the official historian of the Covens. Upon arriving at his hideout, Selen falls through a trapdoor, forcing Michael to intervene. However, he is knocked down by a lichen guard. Michael changes into his hybrid form and easily kills the two remaining lichens defending Tannies' lair, and then enters through the window, intimidating Tannies himself. After learning the truth about Selen's family and how the vampire, and lichen species arose, Selene and Michael travel to the Sancta Helena, a cargo ship where Michael meets his distant ancestor, Alexander Corvinus. The sudden intrusion of Marcus and the subsequent battle results in Michael being impaled and seemingly killed on a steel beam. Enraged and heartbroken, Selen takes action and in an effort to prevent Marcus from liberating his twin brother, William Corvinus, the first werewolf and progenitor of the lichen bloodline, a furious and despondent Selen departs. Despite her unwillingness to leave Michael's body behind, she insists it be brought with her to William's lair via helicopter. Thanks to the remarkable healing powers of a hybrid, his body regenerates, and Michael returns to life. Descending into William's prison to rescue Selen, he confronts William. Though initially overpowered by the werewolf, Michael ultimately manages to kill him by splitting his head in two. Distracted by his twin's death, Marcus is defeated by Selen. 
Reunited, Selen and Michael passionately kiss, standing under the sunlight in William's hideout. Six months later, humanity discovers the existence of vampires, and likens and declares war to exterminate both species. Selen and Michael plan to flee the city by boat. An ambush by a police squad awaits Michael at the dock. Transforming into his hybrid form to defend himself, he's struck down by a silver grenade and falls into the water. Selen dives to save him, but a grenade explosion separates them, and both are captured. They're subsequently cryogenically frozen and placed in stasis chambers for 12 years by the biotechnology giant, Antigen, which claims to be developing an antidote for the virus that creates vampires and lichens. During captivity, Selen gives birth to a girl named Eve, the child of her and Michael. Eve frees her mother but cannot locate her father. Due to Michael's absence and remarks made by the vampire Thomas, everyone, including Selen, initially believes Michael is dead. However, as Selen is pursued by Dr. Jacob Lane after being captured, she finds the cryogenic chamber where Michael was kept and shoots it to free him. After Jacob Lane and his son Quint are defeated by Selen and Eve, they return to rescue Michael, only to discover he is not there. Utilizing Eve's telepathic link with her father, they attempt to locate him on Antigen's roof, unsuccessfully. Consequently, Selen vows to continue searching for him, knowing he too is now a hunted man. In the beginning of the subsequent conflict, Michael remains missing, having escaped from Antigen. During the battle against the new Lycan leader, Marius, Selen accidentally gets a drop of his blood in her mouth, revealing memories in which Michael is present. Later, it's unveiled that Michael was captured by Marius, his throat slashed, and his blood drained, seemingly resulting in his death, which temporarily enhanced Marius's abilities. As Marius consumes the last vial of Michael's blood in front of Selen, she bites her wrist, using her own blood memories of the time spent with Michael to fuel her rage. Michael is avenged when Selen kills Marius. Underworld, Endless War In the final chapter of Endless War, Selen and Michael evade humans, who are actively hunting and killing immortals. They track Crandrill and assault a hotel, discovering Crandrill, and a harem of lichens loyal to him. After Michael fights Crandrill and hurls him through a hotel window, Selen pounces on the fallen lichen, unloading her weapon into him. Before she delivers the killing blow, Crandrill taunts her with the fact that her species is also being hunted, and it's only a matter of time before she joins him in hell. Ignoring Crandrill's remark, Selen finishes him off and reunites with Michael, noting that while she doesn't feel the same as before, as long as she and Michael are together, she can endure this life forever. At the series' onset, Michael appears somewhat solitary, a consequence of the emotional trauma he endured from a car accident years prior, primarily keeping to himself and maintaining few friendships. Despite this, he isn't antisocial. Instead, he demonstrates considerable care and protectiveness towards others, as evidenced by his decision to become a surgeon to help save lives. Michael is also brave, sometimes to the point of recklessness, risking his own life to assist a human woman who was shot in the subway, attempting to treat her injuries and assuring her safety. His concern extends to Selen, towards whom he showed concern for her injuries, and performed CPR, despite her initial hostility towards him. Michael can be stubborn and occasionally ignores advice, such as when he disregards Selen's order to stay away from the city and abstain from human food, which eventually results in serious injuries at the hands of police officers, and forces Selen to save him. Michael was deeply shocked when he first discovered supernatural beings existed, and were trying to capture him, although, in underworld evolution, he seemed to have quickly accepted this abrupt change in circumstances. While Michael appears to isolate himself from others, he is hardly indifferent and shows quite a bit of compassion to others, even non-humans, who initially terrified him. He displays concern for Selen and empathetically reacts with visible surprise when she shares the story of her family's murder. He also seems to sympathize with Lucian after learning that Lucian's lover, Sonia, was executed before his eyes. It's possible that Michael's protective instinct originates from being unable to save his fiancée when they were involved in a car accident years before. Michael expressed survivor's guilt over her death due to his lack of medical knowledge to treat her shock and trauma, and even years later still kept old photographs of them in his apartment. This might also explain why he keeps a distance from others. The person Michael is closest to is Selen, 
to whom he felt drawn at first sight at the subway station. Later, after their first interaction, Michael, although initially intimidated by her, comes to admire Selen. He likely sees a kindred spirit in her, both having suffered significant personal losses and possessing similar personality traits. Michael is initially clearly more empathetic and compassionate toward others than Selen, but becomes less reluctant to harm others to protect himself as the series progresses. Michael's protective and affectionate traits are most prominently displayed around Selen as he risks his own life to defend her on more than one occasion, and has also saved her life at least twice. Notes: All indications from the film and statements from the cast and crew suggest that Michael is dead. However, given Michael's feats in underworld evolution, especially his ability to resurrect after being killed by Marcus Corvinus, it's entirely possible that Michael survived unless Marius destroyed his entire body. If a sixth film is released, Michael's presence or absence will presumably reveal whether he could resurrect. Michael is portrayed by Scott Speedman in Underworld and Underworld Evolution. Speedman's facial image is digitally superimposed onto a stand-in for Michael's brief appearance in Underworld Awakening, and Trent Garrett replaces Speedman in Underworld Blood Wars. In the anime Underworld Endless War, his voice is provided by Mark Oliver. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment and share your ideas for future videos. Thanks for your support, and we can't wait to see you again in our next video.